Uh, yeah. I want I want to pull up the story. Um, it's actually a series of tweets. The story is actually an op- uh, an opinion piece from Jack Posobiec from Newsweek. This year's Olympics will double as Xi Jinping's coronation. This was a fantastic, probably the best piece that's ever been written in Newsweek. I, I, I think actually. I, yeah. I do like how you you referenced your own article with Wow. <laughs> you saw that. <laughs> it, was, no, it was pretty good. It was an okay piece. I no, wouldn't go so that I, far. So I, was... I tweeted out the yeah the excerpts from the article, but I took my name. I took I cut it so that you couldn't see my name, and I just wrote Wow. <laughs> so check us out. Check us out. Uh, this is a guy. I believe he's from the Southern Poverty Law Center, right? Yes. Uh. He yeah, said, great. very highly credible, highly <laughs> credible. <laughs> Newsweek. Know, I want to hear what he has to say. Newsweek just published an op ed by neo Nazi collaborator and Stop the Steal liar what? Jack Posobiec. This guy is beneath OAN and not OAN and now just extremely embarrassing. Maddie Hassan then says, Congrats to Newsweek opinion editors Josh Hammer and Bungar Sargon for their ongoing struggle to mainstream and normalize the conspiracist far right in this country. Now, what I, I just want to mention. We were talking about earlier is how they keep trying to do this this smear of calling someone a Nazi far right or whatever. And uh, just like here we are sitting with Jack Posobiec, who's a nice guy who talks about politics. And not once have I heard him espouse anything in any way supportive I, of any of these groups. I actually talked about and it's funny to hear Mehdi Hassan say that because Mehdi Hassan was a presenter for Al Jazeera for many, many years and has spoken out against. He made his bones in in reporting and, and later at Huffington Post speaking out against Islamophobia. Well, Mehdi, if you had actually taken the time to read the words that I wrote in Newsweek, there's actually a whole section in there about the concentration camps of Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang that but maybe this, something this, where we could actually agree on. So there's two points here. There was I, I, I wanted to bring this up. I mean, for one, you're here so we can talk about it. Hi. Calling you the, these names like a neo-Nazi collaborator. It's just I, I, I don't believe any regular person, any any, you know, you, 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 you go knock on a random door and you show it to them. They're going to go, oh, shut up. Like, I just don't believe these people anymore. Like you, you go to a local house of a guy who's not in politics and he's going to raid that and be like, I don't believe it. You look at Mehdi Hassan, who's now pushing the same narrative. But like you said, he didn't even read what you wrote. It's the same thing with the Joe Rogan story. Everyone, I, I love the meme going around where it's like, Joe Rogan spreading misinformation. Oh, really? What did he say? Nobody knows. See, see, that's how dangerous it is. It's the silence, dissident voices. Mouse cultural revolution. You cannot even talk to your family about anything. Because what if your family member report to the local red guards? Yeah. Then they could uh, go to struggle sessions. So I had to self-censor. When I start to ask questions, I only ask myself inside of my own head. Mm. I could not say well, anything. Wait, Tim, I, now I, do me a favor. You're, you're on Mediasan's page right there. Do you see over to the right where it has Mediasan's bio right yeah. now? Does it say where Mediasan currently works? Yeah, he works for NBC. So he works for NBC and he has a, uh, a show also on NBC's Peacock, which is their streaming service. Now... Uh, I did a little digging on this, um, really, really deep digging. It took me, you know, seconds of time to search this up. NBC signed an $8 billion contract with the International Olympic Committee to be their exclusive host for the Olympics all the way through 2032. And then the exclusive streaming service of the Olympics is and it's so strange Peacock TV, the exact same place where Mehdi Hassan has his streaming service. So it's so strange to me that s- such a coincidence Follow that they the would money. send this guy Follow out the money. Yeah. Yeah. with Absolutely. 8 billion reasons but to come out and be... It's like the... They used to actually, you know, have front groups for this sort of thing. Now they're just doing it in the open. Like, I it's just, like, try harder, guys. Come on. I just saw this story. And like I mentioned, the, 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 the trying to smear you the not even reading the article, the Joe Rogan spreads lies, but we don't actually listen to his show anyway. And I'm just like, I don't think they're, I think I think they've lost. I think they've outright lost. Well, this is what- The establishment what media. Malice. Yeah, so, so that's the other thing I wanted to bring up. Michael Malice responded to Mehdi Hassan saying, impotence signaling is much funnier Oof. than virtue signaling. They've lost monopoly control over the mic and don't know what to do except sneer. Virtue signaling, of course, being like, look at me so virtuous. I condemn that too. But now they're just going like, we can't do anything about this, so we're losers. People are listening to Joe Rogan, and they're not. And Jack Posobiec is getting written up in Newsweek. What do we do? Well, and and and, and just to to Mike, I you know I appreciate. So you what would that, they call me? That I'm sitting next to Jack. Uh, <laughs> no, exactly. You're, you're, it's you're, it're, you're it's a collaborator. We, we, I guess, you're now really. a collaborator. No, 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 we're all talk, collaborators. We talked about this the other day. You're there's po- our poso- four Nazis. We're all yeah, no, poso right, right, collaborators. Right, right. No, no. Look, we 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 talked about yesterday. There are four 
episodes. There's a, a tweet that's going viral where a guy says in Germany, we have a saying. If there's 11, if, if there's 11 people, or if there's a neo-Nazi sitting at a table and 10 people at the table talking to him, you have 11 Nazis. And that is a psychotic worldview. But it proves to the left, politics can only flow in one direction. If you take an Antifa guy, sit him at a table, and you take Jack Posobiec and sit him at the same table and they're talking, the left will look at it and say, two far right individuals. Even though the one guy's clearly got an Antifa flag and wearing a mask and everything, they don't care. We, we have a picture of, you know, no, me, too me far right. Antifa guy. So yeah. that's what they want to do. They want to shut down any kind of discussions, conversations by name. Calling. Well, Lily, yeah. let, me, let me ask you a question. When Chairman Mao launched the, uh, uh, his anti-rightist campaign, what was every person so who spoke out? If you spoke out against the Great Leap Forward and you said, hey, there's millions of people who are dying of famine in the countryside, what were you labeled? Well, you will lose your job. You will get locked up. That's why the people don't understand when you say CCP dictatorship means all the leaders in China are not elected by people. They are appointed by the upper nine Communist Party officials. So they naturally want to cover it up. So when people die of starvation during the Great Leap Forward in the 50s, actually 50 million people died, but they don't want to report that to the central government because they can, local government officials can lose their jobs. They're trying to cover up. Same thing with COVID, same thing with the SARS, and same thing with the flooding. So it's very dangerous. Here's the one thing on team I want to tell you. Because of your good work and our discussion, somebody texted me, they just donated and they live in New Hampshire. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're, good. We're, yes. we're getting messages from people saying they're donating to your, to your campaign. Oh, great. Too. Thank well, you very much. You got really angry about the gun rights thing and mentioned having the AR-15. Everybody was cheering. And they uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very, very happy with you. So you would be, right, so they would, so the officially, and they would, and they would conduct the struggle sessions and it would be around your neck, you would be labeled a right wing extremist for saying there were people dying and can of famine and committing even in some cases cannibalism in the countryside just so they could survive. Remember this? This is a red guard, like a red guard do yeah. this drug sessions. Did you say this twenty twenty? The, the red salute? Yeah. The right. Twenty twenty. You I've seen college students in America march down the street doing the red salute. Yep. Yes. Well, so Lily, speaking of college students and these types of people, one question I want to ask you, Lily, is prior to the Maoist revolution, did you know people who were leftist or communist or was it just a very well organized small minority that ended up infiltrating and taking over? Were the, were the people calling for this or how did this happen? Well, of course, I had no idea. I was born mm -hmm. like a into the Mao's culture room. Mm -hmm. I was two years old to 12 years old. I was totally indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. I had uh, no idea. We were just told that the uh, Taiwan people are starving to death and lots of people are living in hell. We need to go liberate them and we need to be grateful for the party, for Chiang Mao. I would just, because I still had a little bit brain, right? I say, mm -hmm. but we're starving now. It's like, yeah. how could be worse off? They were right, mm -hmm. I mean, to us. But it doesn't matter. You self-censor, you don't ask questions. I never challenged anything in my life until I was 12 years old. When Mao died, it's like, a, oh my God died because the way chanted every day, long never chant my Mao, 10,000 years, double 10,000 years until he died. It was like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. who lied to me? That's what I was wondering. I was whispering to myself and I decided to go to college, study law so I can change China, maybe search for truth. But by the time I went to law school, and then they told me, no, 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 law is not for justice. Law is a tool used by the party to govern its masses. Super union model. I got lost again. Really, I had lots of very depressive, totally so lost moments in my life until I came to this country. You, you, were, you were telling us last time you were here that you had to like lie to try and get out of the country and pretend that you would, you know, you lied and claimed you would come back. Yeah, everything has to be PC because you need the permission of the party to quit your job. Otherwise, you pay money back. You need the permission to go get a passport. So I, that's why I call myself a straight red because I had to survive. If I want to come to United States for my freedom, I had to say what if it's PC? Oh, I'm gonna um, get a college master degree here in the US to serve my country better on my own time, on my own time. I will come back to serve my country. Okay, sign the agreement. The agreement is I must promise to go back to China after my master's degree, okay? Or two consequences, we kick you out of the party because you know, I was forced to join party in order to teach in law school as a faculty member, you must have the party membership. 
Otherwise, they don't trust you. Where your loyalty? You got to be loyal to the party. So I don't care about that. Okay, you can kick me out. I was on probation status anyway. First year, I hate it because I just could not believe anymore. Then next one's very hard. They kick you a personnel file to your hometown, which is Chengdu, Sichuan. Because if you live, work in Shanghai, you must have your personnel file to go with your job. But if you don't go back on time, they kick your file back to Chengdu. So that means I, I, there's no hope I can go back to Shanghai and live there as a legal resident, have a benefit, because that ties to your benefits. So I guess Tiananmen Square, that the political asylum status, kind of you know give to every Chinese student. Yeah. So I was okay later to go back to China, All but right. but I had to cancel my trip 2019 because I was threatened. Be, how dare you speak bad about your motherland in the United States to students? Mm. So when, I said I'm teaching the truth. No, you are traitor. Uh, <laughs> so was I was the, threatened. Uh, well, when was the last time you were home? 2015. I missed my home. Wow. My family, my, my extended relative, one brother, three uncles, one aunt, and cousins. I met some uh, people who traveled through North Korea, and they told me that if there is like a small town or village, and they have a cow, and the cow dies, they can't touch it. They have to call the local military officer who was, you know, appointed to come and take the cow to be distributed evenly among the country for everybody. <laughs> if you take it to eat because you're starving... They, they put you in the work camps or they outright kill you and execute your family. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know. You don't know every day, every minute you could be breaking the law. <sighs> That's how bad, look, when you talk about oppressive regime, it's it just that people have no rights. You are treated like some animals without human dignity. Everything you say, everything you do, you are criminal. I would hate to see Americans becoming like that. Wait, there's so many laws. You don't know which well, day you will be breaking the laws. You yeah. mean like if somebody was holding the door open for you at the U.S. Capitol and you walked inside unbeknownst because you thought that you were just at a protest and if, now suddenly you're put in a gulag? If you mean the like police that? opened the door for you. The police, you, not yeah. just somebody. The and police. said yep. on yeah. camera, I don't agree with it, but I respect your right to protest. Waving you <sighs> in. And now those and now people you are. In. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, ridiculous. Yeah, that's where we're at. It's insane. Uh, well, maybe Trump will get reelected and pardon a bunch of people or something. But I don't think they're getting that, that long of prison sentence. Trump anyway. should really do something right now for the people that are behind bars. Right. And if he could do something, Agreed. set up a legal fund, set up a way just just he can't tweet anymore. But you, he could post it through his, um, you know, through his press release. Do something for the people now. Show people that you're still in the fight. If you want people to know that you're serious, do something for the people. Because guess what? They don't have the ability. They don't have the luxury of waiting until 2025. They're behind bars right now. Why yeah. can't why can they have a, every citizen sub, supposed to have the speeding trial? You cannot hold people this long. There are supposed to be no political prisoners in a free country. It's yeah. like, why are the people still locked up without the trials? You know, we, we, we need to do something and question it to say, hey, we need to advocate. You know, they should have a speedy trial and you should have a jury and then you should you should have all the means. Like it's become so political now. Mm -hmm. So you can get bailed out if you're violent criminals yep. and burn stuff and looting property. Somebody will raise $23 million for you to get out. You come out, you commit another crime, you kill more people. But those people, January 6th. Yeah. You know, they're well, still in the jail. Lily, and I think the exact reason for that is because, unfortunately, uh, most Americans don't value the principles upon which this nation was founded as much as you do uh, as a citizen. And I think the ones who do value it are too complacent to actually do anything about it. So they bought into the media rhetoric mm -hmm. and... Uh, have you well, seen I think, well, I think many sad. of them. The thing is, I think many people haven't bought into the media rhetoric, but it happened a while ago. They're not thinking about it. It wasn't me. It wasn't my family. It wasn't anyone I care about. So I'm just going to forget just it. Like happened. A, just like the people say in Nazi Germany, by the time they came for me, there's nobody left to mm -hmm. defend me. That's how you lose a country so fast. Well, Solzhenitsyn wrote about that. He said a lot of the people who, when they were brought away by the guards, um, they would be told they would say, oh, well, they were asked to come. They say, well, I'll just go down because this is a big mistake. And I know I didn't. Yeah, I'll go down. Wrong, yeah, exactly. So I'll go down That's and right. explain things. And they never came home. But the you know, we were talking about uh, fundraising a second ago. And I don't know if you guys have seen the story that Andrew Kerr, uh, believes of the Washington Examiner now, uh, has been reporting about BLM and the donations right. of BLM and the fact that they walked out of 2020 
with $60 million in the bank. And we remember that in the wake of the George Floyd video going viral, there were companies just throwing, literally throwing money at BLM. But Andrew Kerr is actually doing the work now. And I think he even went to their registered address in Los Angeles and is trying to figure out, hey, so who's in charge of the money, right? Who's in charge of like, who are the actual fiduciary uh, stakeholders here? Who is responsible for the $60 million? He can't, because we saw people, um, Patrice Cullors and others have resigned from BLM. So who's actually in charge of the money? He can't find anyone who's in charge of this. Did, didn't he say the address wasn't even legit? Like he went there and there was nothing there. Right, and the guy said they've never been here. Yeah. And then they said, well, hold on, <laughs> but we we appointed two people who to serve as the new, you know, the new runners, the new chairman of BLM. But then those he went and, and interviewed those people and they said, oh yeah, they appointed us, but we never accepted. Wow. Right, so we never accepted the appointment. So that's fraud. That's $60 million of fraud right there. Yeah. And so if that's all true, and he's, by the way, he's saying that I think, um, uh, I think the state AG is actually opening up an investigation into this because that that's straight up nonprofit fraud if that's what's going on. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to watch live, you can check out this channel Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you want more unfiltered and uncensored content with all of these guests, go to TimCast.com and become a member. All of these guests you know and love in exclusive segments on our website where we are unrestricted in what we talk about. So you'll definitely not want to miss it. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all next time.